find a lot of hits on it and a lot of different like Christmas ornaments and then obviously some baby rattles. But I've never seen anybody do kind of larger stuff, which I've done. So, uh, so these are just some of the baby rattles I've done. Uh, they're not all that fancy, as you can see. The, uh, I've kind of gotten stuck on just one shape here, but it's kind of a nice shape. And that's what I'm going to do tonight. Um, and then uh, turn in the rattle. Obviously, when you turn the rattle, you don't want to turn it too small. I turned one too small and it fell out. <laughs> so uh, uh, I've also uh, put one together and turned it and forgot to put the rattle in there. So I call that my uh, Aggie baby rattle. <laughs> so, all right. So uh, let's see. Just uh, Mike, why don't we go through the PowerPoint real quick, and we'll start with that. And this will just kind of give you a high-level overview of kind of the procedures to go through and some of the steps that I use when I get ready to do this. So as you can see, there's some uh, Christmas ornaments that were done. So first thing you got to do is the prep work. Uh, you want to uh, make your sticks or staves, and they need to be a good 90 degrees. So what I do is I'll rip them on the table saw and uh, then flip it and rip it again, and that gives me a good 90 degree. And then just for myself, I'll put, put it on the planer and run it through the plan, planer real quick, and that'll give me uh, a good clean edge to start with. So, uh, so that's some of the prep work, and then you'll want to mount it. I'll go through uh, that here in just a sec with what we're going to turn in a few minutes. So you'll mount that on the lathe, and then you'll want to turn the inside, and you'll want to think about the design that you want to use. So uh, as you can see here, uh, as you turn it, I just kind of use this style of design, but you can do uh, kind of a shark's tooth zigzag design. I've seen a uh, couple where they'll turn straight across, but they'll put a, uh, they'll kind of turn a, uh, a notch in there and it'll make a cross when you finally put it together. So that's another design you can do. So uh, once you get the inside, then you're going to flip your sticks or your staves 180 degrees, and that makes the inside out. You'll glue that together, and then you'll turn the outside and finish it. So that's kind of just the high-level uh, steps that you'll want to go through. So that's, uh, that's kind of what I do, uh, some of the steps I go through. Even uh, that's still holds true from something small to something large. And uh, as you can see, uh, this, I made that for my uh, youngest daughter's wedding. It was uh, for her wedding cake. And so I turned the base. And the base part of this, the, each square was roughly two inches. So I had a big block of wood on the lathe turning that. And you can see the, the shape that I got as I turn that. I just wanted a nice kind of oval teardrop shape in there. So the lady, uh, when she brought the cake in, wouldn't put it on there. And I told her it held a 90 or 80 pound bag of concrete. And she reluctantly put the, uh, the wedding cake on there. So, uh, and no issues. So uh, a few years ago, I'm, I had the idea to do this, but I didn't start out doing that. And I just did a quick prototype. I uh, just ripped some two by fours. I wanted to understand the cuts I had to make for this. So this was my practice piece. I wanted to get the pummel cut down where I go from the square transition into the round. So I wanted to be sure I got that and understood what I needed to do to make that transition. And then I needed, uh, I just wanted to see how my shape looked. Because I, again, I was kind of going for that long teardrop type shape. So you can see this was the uh, prototype I did. So after I finished that, then I uh, put this on the lathe and got my pummel cut here and left enough distance to attach my legs. Uh, this was kind of unique since it was so long I would get a lot of vibration on this. So. I would use my skew on this. In fact, I 
suggest you use the skew for the majority of it, and I'll show you why as we're turning that. Uh, so I've got my uh, shape that I cut for the inside and then glued it together. And luckily, when I turned it into the fair, I got second place on it. So, so that was a nice, uh, uh, that was nice. So same concept for all of that. I've never seen anybody turn something this large on an inside out. So I guess that makes that a little unique. Okay, Mike, let's go to the next one. Uh, so the prep work, you're just going to rip or cut your uh, sticks. You can see the sticks I've got here are not very clean. They're, uh, uh, some worm got into it on one side. There's some checks in here, but they're still usable. So if I wanted to use this, I would turn this on the inside, turn my inside shape, and then when I flipped it outside, I would just simply cut that off. So these are good, usable sticks. I would be concerned about the check. Uh, you might want to cut that off so that you didn't get, because that goes in at least an inch or an inch and a half. So that might cause you some trouble. But sticks like this are perfectly usable, so they don't have to be clean. I like to use uh, maple, but whatever you got handy. I've turned coca boba, ash, which is what this is. Uh, maple's good. If you're making baby rattles, hardwood's better because it gives it a really nice little rattle sound. All right, what's the next one we got, Mike? Okay. So what you want to do is this, when you have your sticks, you'll want to decide uh, which side's going to be your inside and which is going to be your outside. And then you'll place the inside out. And here's what I've done with this one. So. Uh, this is going to be my inside, and I've uh, placed it on the inside, so I'm going to turn my shape out here on this side, and then uh, we're going to number the ends, and then we'll mount with uh, double-sided tape. I like to do that just so I know that there's no movement in these sticks, so I do that with most everything. So uh, the tape, I think I got this at Lowe's. It's pretty thin and it's easy to work with and it holds each one of these sticks in place. So uh, that one, you know, I, di I didn't stick those together, but that's going to hold it in place. And then this one, that one, I did stick that one together. So... Uh, Paper glue, the one that's stuck together. Uh, it's all tape. It's all tape. I don't use glue. Uh, if you go to the website, you'll see people that do glue them together. That just seems kind of like overkill to me. Because so, you have to wait for glue to dry. And most of us turners aren't very patient. Yeah, yeah, we all want it yesterday. So, Okay, so uh, then you mount that on the, uh, on the lathe. And you can see here that I do have these numbered so that I know which, uh, which one belongs where. And that kind of keeps me uh, honest as far as having them in the right. I'm not getting them mixed up. So then we mount that on the lathe. And then the idea is to kind of get your brain in, in the right frame of mind so that you know what to turn. So Mike, let's go to the next one. <coughs> and uh, so you mount on the lathe. Uh, begin your turning. Uh, I use a, a spur drive. Uh, if you're kind of new, you might want to use a safety drive. It's real tempting to put a tendon on there, and that's not a good idea, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So I had uh, disastrous results. And then you don't want to turn any deeper than halfway. If you go a little more than half, then you just cut the piece in two. So you want to be careful. Okay, what do you see here? Do you see the white pillars? Does everybody see the turnings and the white pillars? Okay, who sees the people? Okay, that's the part you want to turn. You want to see the people. So that would be the, the shapes that you want to turn there. So if you can see the, the person, the back of the head, you'll want to turn those, make that turning. That's exactly what you're doing here. So it's almost like the negative of a photograph. You want to turn out that negative. So that's kind of the, 
frame of mind you want to get your, your brain in when you're turning that. You're going to be turning that negative piece. Any questions about that? Everybody got the idea behind that? Okay. So then uh, you turn your ball or rattle. Once you've got that done, uh, you're going to finish the inside. You'll do that before you, you flip it and glue it. And then you'll flip and glue the pieces in place. Be sure and add your rattle. And then uh, make sure there's no excess glue. Uh, if you look at this piece, I just glued it together and I wasn't too worried about it. You'll see glue has squeezed out in between these joints. Uh, if you have glue, like in between this, you can see this was a real small piece that I did. There's no way you're going to get in there to clean that excess glue out. So as you're gluing this together, uh, where these joints are, where you've turned, you want to be real light on the glue. And if you get it in there, you can use a Q-tip or something, you know, maybe a paper towel on a stick or something and clean it out. Okay, and then uh, when that's dry, you're just going to mount between centers and then turn the outside. So I think that's it for the PowerPoint, Mike. So, uh, oh, the other thing is once you finish the outside uh, and you turn this, these edges right here are going to be really sharp. So you want to be sure and sand these edges down uh, after you've finished and then put your finish on. If you're making a baby rattle, I'd, any of your finishes will work. I'd suggest staying away from walnut oil just for nut allergies. So, uh, but shellac or lacquer, any of your other finishes would be good. So, uh, y'all want to look at these? We can pass some of those around if y'all want. So. Uh, all right, what we're going to do, uh, let's kind of quit talking a little bit and, and do some turning here. So uh, we've got these ready. That's going to fit on there like that. And there we go. these flipped up so I wouldn't have to dig these out but it there we go now I made one for my grandson he's four now uh, he finally destroyed it he finally broke the rattle off the handle and then when he was about two and a half or three he finally got the ball out of the rattle so uh, I'm, yeah, what I've done here is I've got that double-sided tape here in the, uh, where I've taped these, these two together. And you can see this inside's not very clean, but I don't care because I'm going to turn this, turn that away. So now I'm just going to stick these together, hopefully. Okay, so that kind of holds it in place. And I almost always use hose clamps. And I try to place these as close to the end as possible. And you make sure, you want to make sure you get the ends going the same way. All right. And I don't like these little metal things flopping around, so I'm going to tie them down with just a couple 
tie wraps. Is that me breathing through yeah. the mic? Yeah, really. Maybe move it up a little bit. Up higher? Yeah, so not just a, just a little bit. There you go. Right, right there. Okay. All right, so there. That's got those tied down. That way they're not flopping around as bad. Now the other thing, a little handy, is yeah. I was so organized when I put everything in there. Well, no matter. Uh, on the ends here, it's a good idea to, I've seen people take little pocket knives and cut out the corners. I use a little spade bit that I'll stick in there and just kind of hollow the point out. When you put it on here, you don't want that point spreading those four, those four sticks apart. So I'll just use a spade bit, dig it out a little bit. All right, so now we're ready to mount. So I'll put it on the lathe between centers. Make sure our uh, make sure that we clear. Uh, again, I don't have to say this, but I am. You want to be sure you keep your hands away from these. Uh, these things, they, your hand will give before they will. All right. Sure. Have you considered using the wider, heavier duty tie wraps instead of the clamps? I've always used clamps because I know those won't move. Uh, you, I probably could get away with using those. I just don't have any. I'm just curious. Yeah. I, I would think you could. The heavier duty ones would probably work, and they'd probably be easier because you can just cut the excess off. Uh, I just, I just had hose clamps, and they work. They work for me. I, I've used these for the bigger pieces. You can see this piece. I think I did this at the Dallas Club a while back. Uh, I actually had to use two, and here I was turning again, kind of a, a teardrop shape, and I was showing kind of how to get that done. So I was going to bring another piece to kind of show and tell, but I forgot to bring it. So it a, was a larger, larger piece. Okay, so it's real tempting to take your tool and start turning this down, but that's not what we want to do. Uh, here's the shape that we want to turn, something like this right here. I've kind of drawn my shape on here. And now I've got a center line on here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Here's your center line. If you turn past that, you just cut that in two. And as we work through this, I'll kind of show you how that works. But when we flip these sticks, we're going to turn. We're going to turn this shape down. You here, you can see I just kind of did a, a V shape on this, and as if I go past that line, this is going to get thinner right here. And if you go too far, you, when you turn your outside, you're going to cut that in two. You can see here, it's getting pretty thin right there. So that's what you want to be careful about. Uh, JR, where's JR? I, yeah, there you are. He was showing me some stuff he did earlier, and his is really thin, and it looks really nice and good. But as you're turning that thin, you you definitely want to be careful and not go too far. Okay. Uh, for this, I'm probably just going to use a spindle gouge. 
and we're going the wrong way. There we go. So what we want to do is we want to make a nice clean cut coming in. This motion, everybody should know from doing your beads and coves. That's, that's all I'm doing right here. Okay, so you can see we've not quite uh, gotten rid of this. We still got some flat parts right here. But this shape right here that we're doing right here, uh, we want to make that nice clean cut. We don't want any jagged edges because that's going to show when we flip those staves and put them together. So now you can see right here we've, we've got to clean this up, but now we've got this uh, turned down so that this is actually mostly round now in this section. Okay, um, let's use this. So you can see the center line that we've got here, and our turning is right here. So we still got oh, roughly a quarter, and a quarter of an inch maybe three-eighths, that we can turn this down. So this is how much room we've got to play with. And so you just want to be mindful of that. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to, well, that's great. That's roughly going to be my center line. So you just want to work on some nice, smooth curves. Is there, so does everybody kind of follow my shape of some of the other rattles I've done before? I mean, it's not real fancy. It's just kind of the pearly brackets on your keyboard. That's kind of the shape that I model here.
we got something going on right here. I need to clean that up. But so far, my shapes are looking just about right. Okay, this one looks a little bit longer than the other one, so I need to come in. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so again, if we look at our center line, we've still got quite a bit of room here that we can cut away. So I'm just going to work on, uh, we're moving more of, uh, as the English say, the timber. We're going to remove some more of that and just kind of keep working on our shape. So does everybody kind of see the idea and the thought behind that? So we've got our shape that we've turned here, and you would turn this to however you want. It's no different uh, if you're doing something big or small. You're going to turn your that negative shape that I kind of showed you in that picture and get that to where you want it. So at this point, uh, all these corners are looking good. That one's a little boogered. I need to clean that up. So I'm going to take another cut here and just clean these, these up. This looks good. I really don't want to touch that anymore. But that doesn't look quite so good, so I want to clean that up. And the reason that's not going to be good is when you flip those and put those together, you're not going to have a, a nice, clean, square joint. This one's kind of going to be boogered up, or it'll be, uh, you'll see a gap there. So now, now we've got nice, clean corners here. So that's good. Okay. So, uh, so really, we're we're pretty much done. That's the inside. So at this point, uh, we can just uh, sand it real quick. Obviously, you want to keep your knuckles away from that. Alright, so that's using the 240. That's nice and clean. Um, so if you see anything in here as you're turning that looks like it might be a defect or doesn't look clean, now's the time you want to clean it up. You also want to put your finish on here. So if you're using lacquer, shellac, or whatever your uh, polyurethane, whatever finish you want to use, you'll want to do that now. Put that on here now. So uh, 
So that's it for the inside. Oop, come back here. All right, so the inside's pretty much done. So now what you have to do is glue the inside. And one of the handiest little jigs I've done was one of these things since I was making baby rattles for friends and different folks. I just made this real quick and that allowed me to uh, clamp up and it squared it all up at the same time. So I just made this and put a nice heavy coats of uh, Minwax pa paste wax on here and it doesn't, doesn't ever stick or anything. You can see when I made this one, I made the rattle. I did a little bit different design, but the rattle won't drop down to the bottom. It'll only stay in the top. So whichever kid gets this, it'll drive him crazy trying to get that ball down <laughs> to the bottom. <laughs> so that's probably a good thing. Uh, I made one for a, a friend of mine at work, and they kept it at their changing table, and they said their kid played with it all the time when they were changing the diaper. So. I guess there was a good good thing. I got a bad glue joint there as I see that. So that's that's not good because you'll see that gap in there. So this will be this would be one that I wouldn't give to somebody because of that 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 gap there. So that's unfortunate that, that gap got in there. But that's ready to turn. Somebody got it. Yeah, somebody did. Probably me just laying it down someplace. Now, I want to show you why. You can certainly use a detail gouge. Uh, a roughing gouge is fine for the uh, first part of this. But I prefer a skew. And I'll show you why. Now, I had a nice piece of Coca Bola that I had put a tendon on and was turning it around and had my trusty spindle gouge. And so I was spinning that thing. I wasn't spinning it fast, but I was probably moderate speed. Well, what happened was that tip caught right there. You can see that. Well, the gouge isn't going to give. The tool rest isn't going to give. The lathe's not. So one guess what gave is all that coca bola and that split. That thing splintered so fast and went all over the garage, I, I still haven't found all the pieces. So that's where, I mean, you can use one, don't get me wrong. But when you use the skew, the skew is going to ride on top of that. There's no chance of it getting caught down in there. So I like using the skew for that. For roughing it out, I think they call this like an English gouge, fingernail gouge, something. I'm not sure what they call it. I want it in one of the Dallas raffle things. But, uh, so I like using this to get it down center. What I'm going to do here is this is the, obviously our rattle part. I'm going to put a little handle down here and another little handle on the other side so the rattle will be in the center. Okay. Okay, that's a little better. We're a little bit off center, and that'll make my turning a little bit off center, but that's okay. Okay, so. One guess what my favorite tool is, huh?
you can see here, we're working on uh, getting this round. And you can see our shapes turning out here. So, And again, I like using the skew because it's just riding on top. So there's no chance of this tip getting in there. almost round. Now we're off center because we have this side round and that side, but we got flats there. And that's just because I didn't get this in the headstock straight. But we're getting there. We're working on our two handles on either side and we've got our inside piece done here. So I'm just going to keep working. So I'm going to take my skew and make sure I get this round right here. You can see we're starting to get fairly thin along here. And, uh, and then right here, so we definitely want to be mindful of that, take our time. I think we got a little bit more to go here. Yeah, just a little bit there. All right, so now we've got that ring. go. 
All right. So I had that one little catch in there, and sure enough, it took a chunk out. Does everybody see that? Uh, you don't? Let me find my other pencil. Here we go. There we go. There's the chunk. Everybody got that? You still don't see it. Uh, yeah. So now this side's smaller than the other. Uh, you can see there it is. There's where it caught it. So it caught it, threw it back, chunk, took the chunk out. All right. I use my seven iron and do a bump and run. And I got a whole lot better doing bump and runs than I ever did using my pitching wedge. This is a lot of the same. It's knowing that this tool removes a lot of material really quick, whereas your uh, some of your skews and then your uh, detail gouge are for making your shapes. And of course, using each tool is a lot of practice. You just practice till you get good with it. Okay. All right, so here we've got our basic shape. Uh, I'm not too much of a favorite of this design, but it, it's certainly a different design. And you can see the, the shape that came out when I had turned that. So uh, I could come down a little bit further here if I wanted. Uh, same for up here. There's a lot of material because the top's only right here. And so I could actually come down a little bit more. But when the kid gets a hold of it, uh, that's going to be your weak spots. I mean, that's where he's going, or I say he, that's where they're going to mess with it. So, uh, 
So that's kind of your basic shape. And you can see, I what? I still got my spot there. That's not cool. Gee, I hate to end the demo with the spot. What was the question? Uh, what I'll do is I'll work it down very close on either end, and then I'll cut it off on one side, and then the other side I'll just uh, take it off the lathe and saw it off and then sand it, sand it in down. So like, uh, let me make sure I get this spot done. Ah, it's still there. Yeah, I think you're right. They'll use that excuse. The pen soaked in, so yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what. We'll just, just for simplistic, we'll break down and use the... still there. It did suck in. Uh, I, I, I'm going not to use a pen next time, huh? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, any questions about kind of the procedures you go through, the steps? I mean, the, the design is in your imagination. Whatever design you want to come up with, uh, you can take this and go to something really large and, and make your design with that. Uh, so you know, I ended up doing that little accent table. It, it's totally up to you. I've, I saw one on the internet. The guy had uh, turned a vase, and it was like this, but he had cut off the top. And so it was an open vase in the center. So you could do something like that and drop down one of those little uh, candles, votive candles, drop that down in there, you know, measure that out. Uh, some of the uh, Christmas ornaments, they'll turn a little Christmas tree and put that on the inside uh, when they do that. So you can certainly do that. Uh, all kinds of different uh, designs you could come up with. Well, I apologize this didn't glue up right. Uh, that's kind of embarrassing. But that's, that's a good point. When you glue those up, you need to make sure you get nice, good, clean glue joints. Here's, uh, here's the block of wood. Your camera's over here, isn't it? So here's the block of wood, and here's the halfway line. So when I uh, cut this, let's see if I can uh, show this a different way. So here's, you know, that's where the top of the wood was, right here, obviously. Then this is our halfway mark. So. If I can, you see that? Yep. So you can see my little. Yeah, if I could, see there we go. You can see I'm really close. My little divot here. Yep. I'm really close to center, and same way for these guys. If you look at this right here, that's getting really close. Uh, to that center line. Gotcha. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, I could have just made this one nice smooth curve and made that whole thing thin. Yeah, in fact, that would probably be good for a demo. That way you could see the curvature of that whole uh, thing. So I'll, I'll probably do that next time I do that. Yeah, yeah, I turned the rattle in there, so uh, that's always fun. And that's where I practice with my skew. I'll, put, I'll just use the chuck, put a clamp of 
Uh, here's a piece of mesquite. And so uh, I think that's what that is, a piece of mesquite in there. So I just turn that. And I try to turn it around with my skew. It just gives me more practice using that. So uh, one of those I passed around, I think I put a marble in there. So you're, you don't have to turn. You can put a marble in there or, you know, anything you want. So, uh, so you, just up to your imagination. That's the biggest thing about this is you can see what I've done, but your imagination can go so much further. Uh, I can say there's a lady in England. She turns hers three or four different times. She'll flip them and turn it, flip them again and turn it, and then flip them again and turn it. And I think after the fourth time, I thought, that's enough for me. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I gave the video to our, our Dallas library. <laughs> so, but um, again, that's the basics. So everything I kind of put in that little PowerPoint, um, that's the steps you want to go through for doing that. And there's certainly variations off of that. If you talk to somebody else, uh, JR, he may have a different method that he, he uses. But the trick is getting a nice square block of wood. So. Uh, No, I haven't done that because it's, it's expensive to get nice wood like ash. The only way I could get a big block of wood is, is well, you could go over to Garland right now and get all kinds of wood. Uh, I, I'd say that in jest. Uh, it's, it's really bad what happened over there. But the only way to get a piece that big, like uh, this is a good example. Well, where's my, here. So this one's not, not too bad. This is, uh, that's an inch and three eighths. So you'd have to have uh, a block of wood that you could get uh, at least an inch and three eighths out of to make it that size. If you want something bigger, obviously you need a bigger block of wood. And that gets kind of expensive if you're trying to go buying it somewhere. It depends on the grain. You would, if you were turning maple, maple's pretty straight grain. So you would just see, almost like it is here, uh, you would see your grain come up and, there's, and then just kind of end. Or it would come to a point on the matching side. So if you can see, well, I don't have the top one. Um, so if you can see the grain coming here, There we go. So if you can see the grain coming here, uh, that's going to match up with the grain coming over here. I just didn't do it on this one, just because I, I was more interested about the shape than the cut. But you certainly could, you know, plan ahead and for like ash, which has a lot of grain in it, you you could plan that ahead. It it, it takes some work, but when you wanted to do the outside, you would want to turn those pieces inside, cut your shape, and then flip it 180. Uh, and I think JR, he did one that was uh, walnut and then maple. It was a you know, dark wood and a light wood, so that, that gave a nice little contrast. Yeah, there it is. There it is. So, uh, thank you, JR. So, you can see. Uh, <laughs> What he's got here, uh, that's a nice contrast. It's really unique. And, and he's got a nice shape on that as well. So thank you for bringing that, JR. It, really, it's only limited by your imagination for that, however, however you want to do that. Uh, anything else? Y'all are letting me off easy. All right.